chanting for children in the audience. <laughs> Feel, okay, marvelous. <laughs> so we'll just put that one aside <laughs> and wing it. Um, no, we, we, uh, we have some history here, you and I. Um, I've been here to this store, I think, more times than any other. I call this my home bookstore. I love being here. Dave Powell. <laughs> Sending was high school football rocks. <laughs> uh, six years ago, I came here on my first book tour, and I read you guys an essay about two brothers who uh, uh, have some rivalry with each other, tend to beat each other up, look a lot like each other, and, and of course that was about my brother and I. Uh, then four years ago, I came and I read you a, a, a fun little um, chapter from the forthcoming book, um, how many of you were here then, where, where, where Kip tries to rescue Liv? Okay, for, for, for the, the, the half of you weren't here then. Um, so, so this is actually from book five, I didn't realize it at the time. <clears throat> and, and, and Kip is, uh, Liv has been captured. She's, uh, she's, she's a spy, and she's going to be hanged. And through the course of this chapter, um, Kip is trying to rescue her, and she's, she's, He's, he's, he's too late then, she gets hanged, and she's, she's hanging there strangling because they didn't drop her far enough. They wanted to strangle her to death. Those not very nice people. And, uh, and, and so Kib has, he has a gun from Gunner, and he needs to shoot the rope. And he shoots, and he misses, because nothing goes easily in my world. And, and then the bad guys see him, and they, and, and they come running up to get him. And they're gonna, you know, they're gonna kill him. And he's, he's, he realized, oh my gosh, I, 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 could shoot, I could have shot the limb. And, and so he uh, takes very careful aim, and, and the bad guys are almost there, and, and he shoots, and he blows Liv's head off. <laughs> and then after, after I picked up a few audience members, uh, I, real, uh, I, 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 re I revealed that that was not a real chapter. <laughs> and I just made that up to give heart attacks. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then immediately after doing that, I, I, I thought to myself, um, you know, ra rather than reveling in like, gosh, that was really good reading, I'm really proud of myself, I immediately started, started thinking like, how do, I, uh, how do I best that? And I was really nervous about that for about two years, and, and then I came up with this idea. And last time, two years ago, um, we did a Choose Your Own Adventure. And, and it seems to me that you guys did not do me proud. No. You guys died. Yeah. <laughs> you guys died. I, I, I think you did something silly. Really? <laughs> What's that? What's that? We didn't even accept the quest. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. You guys, uh, well, gee. Um, Seattle lived. <laughs> it, it hurt me there, guys. It hurt me there. <laughs> Um, so, uh, immediately after doing that, I, I, I reveled in, in, in how well I'd done at besting myself and started immediately thinking, oh my god, what am I going to do two years from now? <laughs> I, I wasn't really worried about the book, because I can do books, but, but like, look, <laughs> looking at these faces, like looking at me going, Brent, give me something good. <laughs> you guys are close enough, and I'm not that fast, <laughs> so I don't know if I can make it to the back door. Um, so I, so, so, so I spent two years in anxiety. <laughs> the good news is I, um, I did come up with something just brilliant for you guys. <clears throat> I'll, I'll tell you the bad news in a second. So <clears throat> um, I was going to take maybe, maybe a chapter from the, from the upcoming book. There was this death scene. It was just so heartbreaking, so wonderful, and I was going to read it to you guys and not tell you if it was real. <laughs> and see, it, it actually was real, I was just going to change one of the names. <laughs> and I thought, this will be delightful, now they'll be in anxiety for two years. <laughs> And so I told my wife my awesome idea. She said, 
honey, you can't do that. <laughs> I said, of course I can. <laughs> and then she said, well, you can't do that, honey, because you'll spoil your own death scene. <sighs> so the bad news is I'm not going to get to use that brilliant idea on you. Um, because I, I, I don't want to spoil this for you. You guys, uh, you know, I, I like tear-stained books. So you come up and have them signed. Um, so I wrote a new thing for you. Um, and, and, and unfortunately, you know, my, my time kind of ran out. So it's a little rough. So you'll have to be gentle with me. Um, this is uh, maybe, well, this is maybe the beginning of not the next book. <clears throat> number five and the completion of the Light Branch series, but this is maybe the beginning of the next, next book. This is uh, the beginning, perhaps, of the next Night Angel book. So the, 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 the reading will be about 35-ish minutes, and then we'll do some questions, and then we'll sign. So one moment while I get some water. I was there when Logan got the news whispered in his ear. I saw a little tremor of fury go through his forearms and his jaw clenched hard. He stood from his chair at the state dinner. Kyler, attend me. We went out to the balcony overlooking hiking, Geyer, hiking Logan Geyer's new capital city, LNA. My boyhood friend looked every bit the king now. He held the balcony railing studying his city, feeling the weight of what he was about to ask me. Finally, he released the railing and turned to me, iron certainty in his gaze. Who, I asked, King Creos. King Creos IV, from what I know, he's envious, lecherous, venal, and vain. Those things are common. He's got a couple of gray kills on him, the kind where an enemy's dropped his weapon as the battle ends, and he cut them down anyway. But the last time I looked into his eyes, he was no villain. I usually only kill worse. I dealt straight with him, and he murdered my messengers. I, I don't need to hear any more, your highness. By the night angels, I swear it shall be done. I left immediately. State dinners never agreed with me anyway. Maybe I can find Durzo before I go and have that talk. Centuries ago, the little city of Erebus set aside this forest as a shrine. The religion died out, but the giant spruce trees remain, and peace lies thicker than the mist on the soft, ferny forest floor. Ancient statues of priestesses are scattered throughout the old growth forest, the shortest of them twice my height. All of them are weeping or supplicating some lost god or lost hope, their paint worn away, stone eyes empty, bodies now the green of moss and speckled with lichen, wrapped in shawls of mist lit by the orange lanterns. To others, it must be a somber place on an evening like this, but the shadows are warm arms and gent gentle shushing in the night to me. I'll take a spooky forest a hundred times for crawling around on rooftops slick with pigeon crap and, or slossing through some sewer to kill someone. This won't be an easy kill. It could be. The Kakari interrupts, as if I didn't know that. Enough from you, I tell him. While the artifact is touching my skin, it can hear my thoughts. What's life-saving is sometimes frigging annoying at others. <laughs> I was about to say, this won't be an easy kill. It'll be just hard enough to be a proper challenge for a night angel of my abilities. Because back in the day, centuries ago, the local priests started a feud with the next town over. Stuff happened, and now Erebus's defenses will be a lot. Stuff happened. Kyler Stern, you convinced a famous bard to tell you a forbidden story, and how you repeat it is, stuff happened. I'd hoped to glean some hints from the tale, but it had been worthless for that. And we do have a few minutes of dark, or we do have a few minutes until full dark 
when the fun begins. Come now, it's, it's not often one hears how two religions died. Fine, fine. So, centuries ago, the impoverished priests of Erebus here made what must have seemed like a brilliant move. They converted the richest guy in the rival town. Problem was, the town's temple was dedicated to Nixus, Mother Night. So the priestesses of Nixus roused some horny young idiots to dress in black sheets and raise hell in Erebus, dubbing themselves the Children of the Night. <laughs> Half of them, not able to afford black dye, wore navy blue sheets instead. <laughs> But in trying to impress the priestesses, the young idiots got carried away, as young idiots do, and instead of beating the rich apostate guy, they beat the rich apostate guy to death. In retaliation, his idiot family got carried away too. They led Erebus to war, massacring not only the priestesses of Nixus, but the entire town. But one priestess escaped. Worst luck for Erebus, she was a true child of the night, and she had access to her temple's hidden treasury. So she spent years finding an assassin willing to kill the high priest of Erebus on their holiest evening of the year. She didn't want one assassination. She wanted this, this assassin's services every year. If someone tried to, or did, light the holy torch, they had to die, preferably that very night. After one assassination, the Temple of Erebus started taking serious precautions. After two, the entire town did. After five, they were fanatical about their defenses. And after 15, the religion itself breathed its last. For who would worship a god who couldn't protect one priest on the holiest night of the year? Better? Very nice, thank you. <laughs> Profoundly interesting is all that is. It has very little to do with tonight, except that the village remembers some of their old security precautions, so things will be a proper challenge for me. The forest of giant spruce surrounds a vast paved circle. In the center, of the in the center is the stepped pyramid of, of Erebus, its peak towering above the giant spruce trees. At its top is the big bronze basin of oil for the holy fire. Once lit, the fire will be visible from the city itself all through the long winter. The guy lighting it, the king. There will be two chances for me to kill King Krios. My first plan violates one of Durzo's precepts. Never let a hit depend on, doing, on someone else doing what they're supposed to do. But that's hyperbole. I expect the king to do all sorts of things he's supposed to do, like walk and breathe on two legs and die if I cut his head off. Durzo is simply a sucker for sweeping generalizations, and even then, Durzo isn't always right. He was wrong about me. There is a better way, the Kakari says quietly. Golly, I never thought of that! You're right, I do have an item that makes me invisible. Why don't I just use that? No need to get testy. Testy? Testy, says the Black Rock, who gives me the silent treatment for years. Testy, says the left nut of darkness. <laughs> the Kakari goes silent, giving me the silent treatment and proving my point. But it's right. Do you know how easy it is to kill someone clean when you're invisible? But I can't. In Elenea, casually, Durzo asked me to promise not to use the Kakari until he could speak with me again and tell me the whole truth. The battle was over, danger was past, and we were both in town for a while, so I said, sure, gratified beyond words that I was finally going to get it straight from the irritatingly closed-lipped legend. The whole truth, finally. And then he just effing left. <laughs> the city, the, the country, I, I don't even know disappeared without saying a word to anyone. I, I would say he, would, he gave me the old Irish goodbye, but there's no Ireland in this world. <laughs> Rough draft. <laughs> <clears throat> so now I need to do this job the hard way. No Kakari, no time to prepare. Just got into town last night. The people are gathering around the base of the pyramid 
There's a lot more religious symbolism than I'd expected. Black sickle moon of Erebus is everywhere. Looks like they've even got some fools to stand in as a new priesthood. I guess with war on the horizon, King Krios is doing everything he can to bind his people to his cause. And it looks like he's revived a lot of the old traditions. For one thing, at least a hundred men and women in old black robes are around him. Citizen bodyguard monks. In a city this small, though, they're not trained. They're really just town folk playing dress up on a holiday. They're all holding unlit torches for the ceremony, but the priests are swapping the torches around. I hear some grumbling. These people have no idea why they have to swap torches, but I do. To the people, it's just some silly tradition, but that assassin centuries back must have had the same thought that I did, rig the king's torch to explode. It shakes my confidence a bit, to be honest. I came this close to doing that tonight. If I had, not only would I have failed, I would have just murdered some random person and five people closest to them. I've, I've killed innocents before, during my training. Never again. The night angel doesn't kill innocents. Durza would have said, a professional doesn't kill innocents. But Durza lost his faith in everything except excellence. I start moving deeper through the crowd as it mulls around, everyone taking their places. Left, not of darkness. <laughs> I'm going to have one chance here, right before the king, acting where the high priest once did. We'll climb the pyramid alone with a torch to light the eternal flame. The mass of these robed citizen bodyguards will pull back and everyone who's anyone in this little kingdom will crowd onto the podium around the king, everyone greeting each other and assuring themselves of how important they all are. Only a few professional bodyguards will stand between the king and me. I bribed one of them. Amidst all the hugging and backslapping and handshaking on the podium, I need only touch the king's skin for a moment. He'll wear gloves, a, another traditional precaution, but I'll reach the skin of his wrist or forearm or neck. I'm no Durzo Blint with his perfect potions and powders for every occasion. The only contact poison I've got kills within minutes, which is great. Unfortunately, it also burns the hell out of skin, so I've mixed it with a powerful narcotic. I'm good enough the king won't even feel my touch, but then I'll have to hope he feels so good from the nar narcotic and is so distracted by his holy duties that he won't notice the blackening patch of necrotic skin on his wrist as he climbs the pyramid. He'll fall mysteriously dead halfway up the stairs. If I'm lucky, he'll tumble dramatically down the steep steps and flop boneless at the feet of the bewildered thousands. The blackened skin will be proof that this was no accident. I get to the front, just as the temple throat singer starts singing. I, I, I wouldn't call it singing. It, it, if you took a hound howling at the moon and, and then strangled it periodically, <laughs> while holding a bag of cats and kicking it rhythmically to a totally different tempo. That'd be something like it. It, it. It's like one day a kid came to his mom and said, Hey mom, look at this sound I can make with my throat. And she said, Oh, keep practicing that. The girls will swoon. <laughs> and he completely forgot that he had the world's most sarcastic mom. <laughs> Years later he'd say, Mom was usually so mean. But there was this one time. <laughs> and look at me now, with this bag of cats. <laughs> As I finally edge my way into place, I scan the bewildered faces. Even the professional bodyguards seem to wonder when that awful man is going to start hurting those, stop hurting those poor animals. <laughs> the bodyguard isn't where he said he'd be. My heart seizes up. He isn't isn't anywhere. I'm, I'm very good at spotting <laughs> liars now. When I gave that bodyguard his money, I was certain he meant to keep his oath. And he's gone. I probably, he says. Durzo isn't always right, he says. I feel a little stab of fear that this job is going sideways. But I put on a bland expression just another young noble eager to mingle, 
You never know, bodyguards make mistakes. I slipped through the last of the citizen bodyguards and up the steps with one last check that the fingertip of my leather glove has no holes in it. With contact poison, poisoning yourself is both a real danger and a huge embarrassment. <laughs> I slide open the belt buckle's hidden compartment where the contact poison is. I can see him there, the king, four paces away. Two more steps and I can out of the corner of my eye. I see a bodyguard notice me, three paces away. Excuse me, my lord, your name? The king is right there. One moment is all it will take. One little smear. They'll drag me away, of course, but there won't be a serious beating immediately. No one wants to make a scene in the middle of their big ceremony. A couple guards will drag me away, but they won't panic until he collapses a few minutes later. With my talent, I can easily get away from a couple of guards. And the king will be dead. No elegance, none. But, but that isn't what stops me. If a bunch of men pile on me, there's no telling what'll happen. Violence is a funny way of rising until men fall, never more to stand. I can't have more innocent blood on my hands. I back away and melt into the crowd, clicking the compartment shut as the king begins his speech. Failure. I'm going to have to go with the backup plan. And why is it the backup plan? because it's even less likely to succeed. The giant spruce is right at the edge of the circle, and it has a nice limb stout enough to stand on near the canopy. You could use me, the Kakari says. I'm not breaking my word to Durzo, I say. Oh no, I didn't mean that. I can be a climbing hook for you, just a tool, not breaking your word. The king is already halfway up the stairs, unbelievably. All of his nobles give short speeches, too. Perfect, I tell the Kakari. Let's do this. I take it off, off my wrist. But it does nothing. What, what are you doing, I ask. The, the king's nearly, it just sits in my hand. Let not of darkness. <laughs> <laughs> that was uncalled for, I apologize. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but then it liquefies and morphs into a wide bar with two hooks. I thunk it against the tree trunk. The hooks sink in effortlessly and then catch the devourer's magic, activating just enough for the hooks to set and stopping at the perfect depth. And here is where magic is just plain awesome. <laughs> You'll get your turn, kid. <laughs> this is my, this is my time. <laughs> With my talent, I ascend the tree in leaps, six and eight feet at a time, jumping, grabbing the handle that's always just exactly where I need it, and leaping again immediately, magic lending my muscles strength. In less than a minute, I reach my branch, high, high above the forest floor. I move out onto the branch, barely winded, pulling a big U-bow from the waxed canvas bag I hid up here. You can't leave a bow strong overnight, especially in these humid woods. Looking over at the king, nearly level with me now, I grab the bowstring from its little watertight box. But the box is cracked. The string is soaking wet, useless. I throw it away with a curse and reach into my belt pouch where I keep a spare. I can't believe I was careless enough to leave the box cracked open. Or, or maybe I wasn't and something fell on it. Worried, I examined my special arrow closely. If a branch from above hit my bag and cracked open the string box, it may have damaged this much more delicate missile as well. I take careful, full breaths, trying to calm my heart after the climb and my sudden fear. The special arrow seems fine. I can't make these myself. And I've only got the one. The thick arrow contains a rare explosive. Unfortunately, its shape and weight also makes it much less accurate than a regular arrow. But this is my only chance. The top of the pyramid is higher than even the tops of the giant spruce trees, and there are screens hiding the king from a direct shot. My only chance is to shoot the arrow skyward and drop it down from high enough above the king, from high above on the king as he fills the fire basin with the big ceremonial jugs of oil. 
If I can hit the jug or the king as he pours, we'll have a satisfying union of oil and fire and king. E even if I miss, if my timing is perfect and close enough, he may still drop and shatter the jug and give me my human torch. But, but a single gust of wind could blow the fat, slow arrow off course, a single heartbeat of hesitation by the king, and it's, it's all for nothing. I, I could try to thread a normal arrow through the slits of the screen, but an invisible arrow in the night taking down a man in black robes? How boring is that? Durso likes to say I have a flair for the dramatic. <laughs> but, but much as I can never convince him of it, this is the best, least murderous way for Logan's reign to be established. Logan's hand will never be seen. No one will hear that he ordered the kills necessary to keep him safe. But people who betray and plot against him will die spectacularly. Durzo would just disappear each threat as it arose. I will deter future threats from arising. I finish my inspection. The missile's intact, it's fine black powder, dry. One good shot, I mutter, slowing my racing heart. One good shot. I hook the bowstring in the lower string knock, then brace the bow with my foot and curl my shin around its lower limb. Sliding the string of the spine, I start bending the thick U back and <coughs> with a sharp crack, the bow snaps. The lower half shoots off into space and tumbles to the forest floor. I, 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 can't, I, I can't believe it. I've had bows snap before, but that was in cold weather, or, or if I was using my talent too, too much and went too fast. This fist of failure wraps around my guts. I don't have a backup bow. I don't have a backup plan. That's not precisely true, the Kakari says. Take me up again. We run over there invisibly, and you kill him while he's still atop the pyramid. It's the only way. A sudden frizzen of suspicion shoots through me. I lift the half the bow I still hold to my eye. There are tiny holes bored in the wood right at the break. A wood mite? Or something more malicious? You didn't, I say. Me? I would never. But, but then I realized how little I know the Kakari. Can it lie to me? Is it capable of sabotage? But, but there's no time. I, I need to decide. Use the Kakari and kill the king, breaking my BS promise to Durzo, or break my oath to Logan. I, I, I can help. Get off of me. I scrape the Kakari off my wrist and slam it into a pouch. The king reaches the top of the pyramid hundreds of paces away. I should have had a backup bow. I, I should have checked it more closely before I put it away. No, I, no, I shouldn't have trusted the Kakari. This had to be sabotage, but, but how? I mean, the holes in the bow, it could do easy. But this was the backup plan. It couldn't have gotten rid of the bodyguard. And if anyone was trying to stop me, it would have just arrested or killed me. An odd smell breaks my reverie. I spin and fall into a defensive stance. I know that smell. It filled my every nightmare growing up. Garlic. <laughs> a shadow drops away, revealing a figure slumped against the trunk of the tree. <laughs> you kept your word, Durzo Plant says. You pass. <laughs> I'm frozen. Durzo strolls languidly past me out onto the narrow branch, as if daring me to push him. Uh, I pass? This was a test? The guard had been honest with me. He had intended to do what he promised. Then he ran into Durzo, who bought off. No, no, that wasn't his style. Who'd scared him off. The man was probably still running. And then Durzo soaked my bowstring. And then just in case I had an extra string, he sabotaged my bow. <laughs> As a test? What, what, to see if I'd keep my promise to him or the one I made to my king? Exactly that, I realize. You mean person, I say for the children <laughs> in the audience. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> Good to see you too, kid. Durzo sits cross-legged facing me, his back to the king and the pyramid and the crowd. I made an oath I'd kill that guy tonight. I say, pointing beyond him. Suddenly the forest glows as King Krios lights the vast basin of oil. Cheers break out from the crowd. An oath to, to Logan, you know, who you commanded me to befriend. Not to mention my king. You made me fail him. Jerzo holds up a finger, and despite myself from long training, I shut up immediately. That flair for the dramatic kid, gonna get you in trouble one of these days. So that's how I knew when I'd strike, and how. I say, not one of these days, today. Today. It wasn't my flair for the dramatic that got me in trouble, Durzo Flynn. It was my loyalty to you, a loyalty that ends. Speaking of loyalty, he interrupts. He points his thumb over his shoulder. The king is still standing, torch held aloft next to the vast flaming basin. But even as I look, one of the basin's leg, the leg nearest him, crumples. The entire basin tilts crazily and dumps a lake of flaming oil over King Krios. <laughs> he goes down shrieking, wearing robes of fire. The oil gushes over him and down the pyramid steps in a river of flame. The king's screams disappear beneath the crowd's howl of shock and then fear as the inferno rushes toward them, snake-like down the stairs, one step at a time, at a time, at a time. There's not enough oil to engulf the crowd, but in their terror, they don't realize it. It becomes a stampede in every direction. Dramatic enough for you? <laughs> I watch the people scatter. Durso is bobbing his head to the screams as if they're music. Oh, uh, good one. <laughs> The square is so big and so open that no one is trampled, but for a few moments, it looks like a near thing. Why? I finally manage. You don't need me now. You have the Kakari. I wanted to see if I could still trust you. That, frankly, ticks me off. <laughs> After everything I've done for him, he looks a little awkwardly apologetic, but he doesn't apologize. Or, or, or by why, did, did, you, did you mean, uh, why did I finish your job for you? Yeah, that, I say, but he misses the sarcasm. I did it to spare you. Borderline kills like this damage your night angel powers. You expect me to believe that? Worth a try, he says. <laughs> why, master? He hesitates and gets a distant look, and when he speaks, it is with a voice that echoes stone centuries. Because I took the job first. To kill King Krios? Before this year, Krios led the torch merely as a king, so I could let it go. But this year, he revived the old religion. This year, he lit the torch as high priest. But what, what does that matter? What, what, in my defense, I, I didn't realize I was immortal, immortal at the time, and she was really an amazing woman. <laughs> I should have known it was a bad idea to take a contract in perpetuity. But this one morning after an amazing night, I... Wait, 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 what? You were the guy who killed all the high priests? You were the guy who killed a religion? Of course I was the guy. <laughs> of course he was the guy. But none of that matters now, Durzo says, waving vaguely to the still flaming pyramid and the still flaming remains of the king. I'm here, as promised, to answer your questions and to convince you to destroy the Black Kakari. Let's talk. Singing is actually really cool. <laughs> Kyler just doesn't have cultural appreciation. Um, also, for those on Facebook, uh, vicissitudes. Um, and then questions. Questions, yes, sir. I almost feel bad that 
ask a question about the, the, the current series, because that was such a wonderful introduction to a book, two books from now. <laughs> uh, but there's something that, that I was wondering how this series is going. You don't seem to be painting the Cremaria as obviously the good guys in this war. So I wonder if you feel that there's some moral legitimacy to the revolt they face. Is there some moral legitimacy to the revolt they face? Um, <coughs> Uh, that the, the Cromerian faces in there. Um, well, I, 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 I guess it depends on uh, where you think rights derive from. Does rights do rights derive from the ascent of the um, the ascent of the governed, or or, or are they uh, granted to kings? And I'm going to leave that one in your plate for for, for this. But clearly, I have um, clearly I have. Uh, in the Chrome area as not all good guys, and and people who have made some compromises that maybe you think not not the right compromise to make. Um, so, so so there is some legitimacy, I believe, to the complaints. There's certainly legitimacy to the complaints. Whether the uh, correct action is revolt um, in response to that, I leave to you. Other questions. Yes, in the back. Uh, I'm ever going to do a, an, an RPG um, or, or a tabletop game or, or, or those. I would love to someday. Um, right now, my, my focus is I believe in keeping the main thing the main thing. And, and for me, uh, the books are the main thing. Uh, I don't believe that books are a... Um, most of this comes up with uh, with with movies, um, and the, the same answer for the movies. Um, I'm at a level of success now where I have a lot of people come to me and ask me to do fun things, and and that's really awesome. Sometimes I say yes, like with, with the uh, with the graphic novel. Sure, we'll we'll do that. That seems like a a sidestep that's that's not going to take me super long. Uh, movies, games, a lot of other things seem like sidesteps that'll take me a long time to do if I want to do them well. And I don't want to put my name on anything that I think is crap. Um, so, so I, I put those on hold for now. Uh, the books are the main thing for me. I'm going to do those as excellently as I can. And uh, <clears throat> when Steven Spielberg comes knocking, I'll, uh, I'll open the door and invite him in. But pretty much anyone else, no. <laughs> Peter Jackson will have to wipe his feet and explain the Hobbit. <laughs> I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> Other questions? Yes? Are you going to do another graphic audio for the fourth book? Yes, there will be graphic audio. It's, it takes them longer because they have to have the whole cast and they write music and all, and all sorts of things for it. Yes, graphic audio. We have, a, we have a deal with them now. I think I heard February, but it was just from some fan who I think had talked to. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I really love the passion they bring to those projects. They're fun. Other questions? In the back. How do you write someone like the Red? How do, how do I write what, sorry? Someone like the Red. How do I write someone like the Red, like, like Andros Guile? I just uh, give myself permission to be who I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's the real me, sorry. <laughs> All these other ones are the hard ones, huh? person has compassion. What do I, how do I do? Honey, can you help me? <laughs> I, I, I love getting into my character's shoes and, uh, and seeing the world as they see it and, uh, and then inflicting that on the rest of us. It's, it's kind of fun, especially the whiny ones and, and the evil ones. Andros is a lot of fun to write, I have to say. Yeah. Yes, sir? How do you write women? How do I write women? Generally, one word at a time. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but, like all my characters, I, I, I try to really sink into their shoes and, and treat them as uh, you know, human beings first. Uh, the, 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 there's this, this great essay, you know, Are Women Human? <laughs> uh, by, by Dorothy Sayers. And, and, and um, she's an amazing, amazing writer. Um, she was friends with Tolkien and, and, and Lewis and those guys. Um, and she's like, hey, you know, treat them as human beings first, right? Like, like, obviously, the way a woman experiences the world can be very different from a man. And, 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 but you, uh, you, you just 
it's the same process for every character that's different than you are. And that's every character is imagine the world from their perspective as well as you can. And then you, you run it through various readers and say, did I screw up anywhere? Um, for, for, uh, for, for some of the women in the Black Guard, I, I talk to some of my friends. I have a friend who is a, a, a college um, athletics coach and she works with you know, elite female athletes and they're fantastic. And, and, and so I, I asked her you know, about some things that were very particular to that group of women because the Black Guard women are elite athletes and they're just studs. Um, so so I, I did little things like that, and, and I, but I, it, it's just the same work. It's just the same work. Um, so, other questions? Yes? Um, do, you have, do you listen to music while you work, or what, uh, how do you get into your writing? Um, I do listen to music while I work. Uh, generally, anything uh, kind of high energy that, that, that I can listen to, but I, I, I go through all sorts of phases. Yeah, I like to listen to music a lot. Um, yeah. Other questions? Is that where the throw music came from? <laughs> uh, actually, actually, I think it is. Yeah, the throw music came from there. Throw, throw music is, is super awesome. It's, it's kind of hard to find very much on, on like Spotify or whatever. There's like three examples or something that I found. Um, it's weird, but wow. Um, <clears throat> yeah, sorry, Kyler. Kind of a jerk sometimes. <laughs> no, I was just a kid. So, uh, there was one back there somewhere. Yes, way in the back. Yes. Uh, is there a specific, it wasn't actually your question, was his, but anyway, um, um, I'll do you, I'll, I'll do you this next. Um, uh, in, in, in this world, yes, there was. In Night Angel, I just kind of made stuff up and that seemed to work for me. Um, and I tried to make them sort of have some similar sound or similar history if they were from a similar culture. Um, in this world, I sort of took the, um, took the Mediterranean Sea Basin area, and especially for names, um, I, I looked at names that were, uh, so, so look at North African names, um, Berber names, Amazigh is, is what they call themselves, uh, that were active in the 15, 1600s. And then I, I would scrub out all the ones with over religious references. Um, so, so you take out your Muhammads, you take out your Marys and Josephs, uh, Marias, and, and, and you use the names that are, you know, okay, this is a Spanish name from 1500, you know, and, and, and I, I would use those and then, Further, I'd scrub those for try, try to look for, for ones that are beautiful that sound nice to the ear, and then scrub those for ones that like American English speakers have a chance at being able to like you look at it and you go like what the heck, <laughs> um, and then further go through and and, and um, try to not have uh, Amazigh has a bunch of like names that start with T L T L, and like you don't want to have five of those even if that's very really common for them you only have one or two. Um, and then further you go through and, and you look for ones that have good, good meaning in case anybody looks up some of these names. So, 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 so there's a deep process there, but, uh, but it's actually pretty simple. It, uh, I mean, I mean in, in the end, it's like, okay, you put these together and they sort of look like they make sense. Uh, and then I have some naming conventions like the Black Guards earn a name or are given a name from, from their buddies, you know, you're red or whatever. Um, so that, that, that was how I did it in a uh, library. I, I really actually like that. Yes, and then you in the back. Um, primary inspiration was one for, for using colors of the rainbow for, for magic. Um, one at the time I thought mistakenly actually uh, that it had been a really long time since anybody did color magic. Uh, I was almost done with Black Prism. Uh, it was like first draft. I was almost, I was done with first draft or something, but I still had six months or, or more to, to finish it up. And then Brandon Sanderson came out with a book on color magic. <laughs> Dude, seriously, <laughs> killing me, Smalls. Um, uh, it, but, but but the reason I, I really liked using color is because with color, uh, everybody understands color, and everybody understands uh, that there's connotations that color brings. So I, so I can attach connotations to my different schools of magic, and it would just make sense to people. Uh, so 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 it, it helped to make a complex system less complicated to people. Uh, so like, oh, red, that's passion. Okay, got it, that's easy. Green, oh, it's, it's, it's wild and free. Okay, got it, that's, that's simple. And that allowed me to have actually a more complicated magic system because you'd be like, okay, this makes sense. This level of it all makes sense. And I can remember seven things. Where if I just called them seven nonsense names and expected people to remember that, you'd never have it. 
So, so that, that was why I meant, uh, for a complicated system like mine, the colors are a really nice um, entry point for that. Uh, yes? Oh, so, 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 sorry, I, there's two of you lined up. Uh, the lady in the back first, then I'll get you. Um, how much, again, the hiking stories, do you find you have to sort of let go and trust the reader to make that jumpration and understand the habits of hiking? Like, it's like that, but obviously some of the conversations, but, you know, there is some doubt, you know, right? Like, oh, are we going to go? How much do you feel like you, you let go? Um, how much do I let go and trust the readers as I go along? I, in some ways, I, I trust pretty radically. I guess, and and that's scary sometimes. Uh, I also trust readers. Uh, the, a, a lot of how I write is um, uh, concerned with uh, control of information, what you know, and and when. Um, but but sometimes, and and I set up these twists. Uh, so sometimes I, I I take my lumps on the front end. Oh, this this lady, she seems a little thin, and like like I've seen this before, and gosh, that, she's just not that good of a character. And then you know, four six years later, you go, yeah, she seems a little thin because she's been lying, and she had a secret to hide. And so, I, so, 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 so I take my lumps on on something something seem, seeming obvious, or like, gosh, that that doesn't seem right. Why would somebody do that? Okay, I guess the author just wants us to believe that. And then six years later, yeah, I had a doubt about that thing. And then it turns out that, oh, man. Um, so so, so, so I, I hope that uh, the eventual payoff is worth enough that when, when readers uh, doubt me, that, uh, that it's worth it in the end. Um, but, but generally, I, I, I trust my readers. Like, I think you've read all the stuff I've read pretty much. You, you, if you see something coming from 10 miles away, or if I see it coming, uh, you probably will too. So I want to do some things that you're not expecting without cheating. And that's, that's the big deal, without cheating. Uh, so so I, I want you to think, yeah, yeah, guy's in prison, and then he's, he's in this blue cell, and he's going to get out of it, and then he gets out of it, and then he's going to wait. You know, the first book. Wait, there's this other thing? No, oh, of course there is. Um, and, and, and so on and so forth. So I like to set those things up for us, which, which helps to have an educated readership there. Okay, I think I'm, I'm running out of time here. One more question, which I already promised you, sir, so you get it. Uh, sir, how many people do you have read your book before you actually get to the final draft? How many people read my books before I get to the final draft? Um, let's see, so there's usually a, me and my wife are first, obviously. Um, my agent reads it. My editor may read it a couple of times, depending on, on each book has been a little different. Uh, now I have five beta readers who read it, so so less than 10 people. And, and sometimes I'll have my French editor read it. Um, so less than 10, but no people. So uh, all right, well, uh, wait, 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 wait before you stop, I just want to say, yeah. um, uh, well, f first of all, um, we're going to move into the signing phase now. Um, if you're a parent with small children, you get to go first. You get to cut in line because uh, we have small children and know how, how hard that is. Um, and last, thank you so much to Powell's for having me. So.